Hi, my name is Andrew Satavoy, and this is using lists and tuples in a simple maze game uh, for the course An Introduction to Interactive Programming in Python by Joe Warren, John Greener, Stephen Wong, and Scott Rixner. So I wanted to make a game this week that would illustrate some of the concepts from, uh, from what we've seen, uh, specifically with lists and tuples. The game I made is a maze of rooms. A uh, player can navigate from room to room. If they find the treasure, they win, and if they meet the wombat, they lose. I set some simple requirements for my game. Um, at each step, the user will see an in image in the canvas. Uh, the player can always turn left and right if the game is in progress. They can only move forward if they see a door. Images are displayed on the canvas, um, and this requires some new graphics functions that I no, they weren't covered this week, but really the focus is on lists and tuples and not not so much on that. But I wanted to make the game sort of interesting, and so I included images. But you could certainly do this without using images. You could do it just by printing, you know, text or something simple on the screen to, in, to indicate that it's a wall or a door or something. So. So to display images on the canvas, there are two functions that are required. First, each image must be loaded from an URL, and second, the image must be drawn on the canvas. The details of how to do this are in the docs, but you'll see it in my code as well. Um, the images must be accessible through a link on the internet, and you can upload images to a file hosting service such as Dropbox to use the link. controls for the game are simple. There are three movement buttons, forward, left, and right. The player can only move forward if there is a door in front of them. Um, they can turn left or right if there's a door or a wall in front of them. Um, the new game button pr puts the player in room zero and starts a new game. And the load images button, um, which you won't always see, is just a bug fix. Um, it's to handle a weird scenario where sometimes the images would fail to load. So I added this button to make it easier to reload the images rather than having to restart the entire game. Um, once the images are loaded for the game, it's not an issue after that, but it, you have to deal with it at least a little bit. And uh, that's pr pretty much everything I wanted to say without looking at the code. So let's look at the code. Okay, so I'm going to go really fast here. There's a lot of code to cover, and I don't have a lot of time in this video. So, uh, we import simple GUI as usual. Um, height and width for the frame. Middle, this is the center location of the canvas. Then we have this, which it looks like I'm assigning a tuple to another tuple, but really this is just the equivalent of this. Okay. So B is getting assigned the value of wombat, C is getting assigned the value of closed door, W is getting assigned the value of wall, and T is getting assigned the value of treasure. Okay. And um, this is just shorthand for that. Okay. Um, Earls is a list and it contains strings just the URLs to the images used. Images is a dictionary. The keys in this dictionary correspond to the uh, these global values here. Okay, So each key gets assigned a URL. Uh, this is just used for image processing. That's not really important for this video. Images loaded. This indicates whether or not the image is successfully loaded. Um, and uh, that's used later on. The load images function I'm not going to talk about, but it sets this value um, uh, so that we can know later on whether we need to retry loading the images. Next, I defined some directions south, west, north, and east. Okay. And then opposite directions. The opposite of south is north. The opposite of west is east. Just the dictionary. Okay. Room map is a is a list. Okay. The, the the map is going to be a list of rooms. Each room is going to be a list of directions. And each direction 
is going to be a list containing um, a key to an image and possibly another room number, another room index. Rather. Okay. So room map is a list of rooms, which is a list of directions, which is a list of key values. Um, make room takes four values and creates a room. A room is a list of lists. Each sublist is going to contain one of the values passed in. Okay, so each of the values passed in corresponds to one of the values in one of the directions in the room. Okay. And we have wall room which creates a room using make room with four walls. Okay. Remember that wall W is wall. Okay. Back to it. Next we have set room. It takes a room number, direction, and a value. It subtracts one from the room number to get the room index, looks up the room in room map, looks up the direction in that room, and sets that value, sets that direction equal to this value. Okay. Next we have join rooms. And join rooms is going to take room A and room B. These are both room numbers and a direction. It's going to call set room, which is up here, and call set room, passing in room A and the direction. And then a list containing a closed door, and then room B, the index of room B. Okay. And then it's going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So it's going to call set room passing in room B in the opposite direction, and then a list containing closed door and the index of room A. And the effect of this is we're given room A and room B and a direction. We're going to create a door here in room A in this direction. So if this is north, it's going to be a door on the north wall, and that door is going to lead to room B. And then we also, in room B, we want to create a door on the, on the opposite direction. So you know, on the south wall, because this was north, we would want this to be the south wall, and we're going to create a door, and that door is going to lead back into room A. Okay. Now we can build our map. So uh, this could be done with looping. I didn't use looping because we haven't covered looping yet. Uh, but it would be a lot smaller with looping. Okay, so. I create 17 rooms using wall room. All of these rooms are just going to have walls, nothing else. So in all four directions, they will, the user would see a wall. Okay, not a very good maze, because nothing leads to anything else. So next, I am going to add winning and losing conditions. So in room 16, on the north wall, I'm going to put a treasure. And in room 17, on the south wall, I'm going to put a wombat. Okay, and then finally I'm going to join my rooms okay, to make an actual maze. So we see here that room 1 is joined on its north wall. It's going to have a door on the north wall of room 1 leading to room 2. And that also means, remember, that that also means that room 2 will have on the south wall a door leading back to room 1. Okay. Let me do that for all of the rooms. Okay. And now I'm going to jump down here. I'm just going to show you that we have the regular code to create a, a create a frame and set the draw handler and add buttons, okay, and add labels and add a new game button here with a button handler to the new game, and then um, we're going to load the images. And if that fails, then we're going to if it fails, then we're going to add a button to allow the user to reload the images. And finally, we start the frame and we create a new game. So going back up, we can see what those functions are. So we have new game, creates, builds the map, 
sets the current room to zero, sets the current direction to, to north, the user's facing north, and sets the game state to empty. Okay? We create a build map. We call build map every time for a new game because build map could be creating a random map. Right now it's creating the same map every time, but um, we could create a random map every time, and we would want to do that for each new game. So that's why I call it here. Okay? And we have the draw handler as usual. Okay. And we it, what it does is look at the current room in the current direction, okay, in the first position of that list. And that gives us the, the key to the image that we want. And that we store here, and then we look up the image in the images dictionary, and we get that image. Then if the image is loaded successfully, then we draw the image. Okay, and then we say if the game state is anything other than empty string, we're going to draw that text on the canvas. Next, we want to check the game state. Is the user currently looking? So this is where the user is currently looking, right? Current room, current direction. That's what the user is looking at. If it's T, that means treasure and the user won. If it's B, that means wombat and the user lost. Display state is just used for debugging. Forward. This is a button handler for the forward button. First, I check the game state. If it's anything other than empty string, then I know that the game is either won or lost, and I let the user know and tell them that they should restart the game. Okay. If it's not an empty state, so any if this is not true here, then um, we're going to look at the current room and current direction. Of what the user is looking at, and that if that is a closed door, then we know that we can move to the next room. So we set the current room to be whatever the current room is uh, in the current direction, from, uh, the index of that room of the um, what the user is looking at. Okay, so the user is currently in current room and looking in current direction. We, we check in the second position of that list, and that gives us the index of the next room. We set that to be the current room. Okay, and now the user's in there. And then draw will update the image. Okay. Okay, and if they're not looking at a closed door, so if this is not true, then we just tell them you can't go that way. Okay. And finally we check to see whether they've won. Okay, so we call check. Okay, and now we have left and right. Okay, so first, just like in, in uh and forward, we check to see whether the game has been won, and if we if it has, then we just tell the user to start the game. If it hasn't been won, then we get the room size. So we get the length of the current room in room map. Okay, that's the the size of the room list. Okay, and now we take the current direction and we subtract one. Okay, so if the current direction is is north, then we're going to subtract one. North is two. So we'll subtract one, and, and it would be one, um, one, right? And that is west. Um, and just to make sure, that just to handle looping around, we go, we take the modulus of that uh, with the room size, okay? And that's the new current direction. And then we call it display state, and like I said, that's used for debugging. And right is almost identical, except that instead of subtracting one, we add one. Okay, and that is all the code. So let's take a quick look at the game running. Okay, the, the images failed to load, so I click load images, and now the image is successfully loaded. Okay, so now I can go forward and forward and forward and forward, and I turn left and I go forward and I turn right and I go forward, and I found the treasure and I win. And I click new game. I go forward, and I go right, and I go forward, 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 and I go right, and I go forward. Oh, I found the one that I lost. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to your feedback. Thanks very much.